We've got those below freezing temperatures in the forecast, and many here in North Texas having flashbacks, rightfully so, to the 2021 power grid failure. Yeah, and if you were there or here, you likely remember what it was like to not have power for a while at least and not know when it was going to come back on. Tonight, IT reporter Brian New is looking to answer the very simple question Is the Texas grid prepared to hold up when the temperatures go down again? Once again, North Texas in a deep freeze. Bitterly cold temperatures expected region wide tonight. When winter storm Yuri hit, the thermostat, Texans shivered. It's out with no power. Pipes busted. Oh my God. Homes flooded as power outages lasted for days. Many of you are angry, and you have a right to be. Texas politicians promised to fix the electrical grid. And in the past three years, power plants have been winterized. Natural gas producers have been put on lists to ensure their power stays on. And the overall electricity capacity in the state has increased. Without a question, the significant improvements have been made in the system up and down. But is it enough? Hopefully, it's better, but hope, you know, that's not really a strategy, not one I'm willing to rely on. And that is why we hit the road, seeking the utmost experts, asking them. On a scale of one to 10. A question. 10 being complete confidence, one being no confidence. A question about their confidence in the Texas grid. What is your confidence level in the state grid if Texas were to have another prolonged winter storm? My level of confidence, I would say it's about a nine. For our first expert, we went to Texas A&M University. The screens that we have up here are to talk with Dr. Thomas Overby. If you went into an actual electric grid control center, he's the director of the school's smart grid center. Nine is a pretty high level yeah, of confidence. Yeah, pretty high. Most people, I would guess, if we went on the street and asked them, right. um, would not have a nine. We have done a lot since Yuri. We've done a lot of winterization of the generators to make sure that they're not going to fail again like they did. Overby says while he can't rule out local power outages due to ice buildup on power lines, he's confident the changes the state has made will prevent another statewide grid failure. I'm not at a nine, no. Our next expert was not as confident. Maybe seven. Beth Garza is a former monitor of ERCOT. She agrees that another blackout that lasts for days is unlikely, but says rolling blackouts that could last for minutes, even hours, she says, is not out of the forecast. We don't have enough supply to meet the demand that would result in that situation. Garza says she would feel a lot more confident if the Texas grid was better connected to the eastern and western grids. Texas has long resisted connecting to avoid federal oversight. But in an emergency, if Texas was better connected, it could pull outside electricity onto the grid. I'm not looking for federal oversight of the electricity system here, but there are ways to increase ERCOT's ability to draw on remote resources from outside the region. For our next expert, we headed to Austin. I don't want to be, you know, an alarmist. Doug Lewin is the author of the Texas Energy and Power Newsletter. His confidence level in the grid is mixed. I just think there's two different scores. I'd say like an eight confidence that it wouldn't be as bad, but only about a three confidence that there wouldn't be any outages at all. Lewin says Texas will always be vulnerable to winter blackouts until changes are made in the way most Texas homes are heated. When the temperature drops below freezing, 60% of Texas homes rely on what's called resistance heat. It is basically the same technology as a hairdryer or a toaster oven sized for an entire home. Replacing those with energy efficient heaters, although would be more expensive up front, would dramatically lessen the load on the grid at the most crucial of times. You cannot build enough supply to overcome that problem, and we're still building homes with resistance heat as, as the secondary heat. If we don't address that, we will always be vulnerable to outages. Now, ERCOT has in, issued a winter wash starting on Monday. The grid operator is anticipating near record level of demand. But, Doug, ERCOT also says that it expects grid conditions to be, quote, normal. 
Yeah, normal. So it tells us that they think that they're ready, obviously. So if there were to be any issues, Brian, you get any kind of sense of when the greatest risk might be? It's kind of a little bit of a prediction, I would suppose, but any idea? Yeah, so ERCOT says typically the riskiest time of day is right around 8 a.m. This is when it's still cold from overnight. Wind typically dies down at that time, and solar hasn't kicked in. It's also the time that people are waking up and using more electricity. Now, Doug, back at the beginning of the winter, ERCOT estimated that the chances of rolling outages if we were to have a severe winter storm are right around 14 percent. Yeah, and you say the term rolling outages. So for anybody who's maybe new to here and haven't dealt with rolling, that's a whole different item and a whole different animal than what we dealt with three years ago. Just uh, delineate the two for us so there's an understanding. Yeah, ab absolutely. Rolling outages, that would mean that people would be without power for several minutes, maybe an hour or two at most. That is a lot different than what people experienced three years ago when some people were without power for days. Yeah, without question. Brian New, thank you. Great insight tonight. We appreciate it. Everybody's crossing fingers. You can get the most up-to-date forecast once again just by downloading that CBS News Texas app. Make sure you have it. It's a great tool. We've made it easy for you. Just use your phone's camera there if you got a second. QR code right side of the screen. That app will then allow you to keep an eye on the radar and the timing of the upcoming weather events.